the one job that no one ever does on the R107. Maybe I'm exaggerating when I'm talking about this particular job, but we're going to talk today about front subframe mounts and engine mounts, which you can combine on any 107 or a 114 or 115 chassis car for a really amazing result, improvement in your ride quality. So let's talk about the front subframe on the R107. Now, some of you might remember there was a campaign years ago with Mercedes to replace these because the ears where the lower control arms would mount on these cars would just shear off. Later on, Mercedes came up with a fix for this, but the fix really was not fully implemented until the 560 SL began, production began. I say this because I had a 380 SL in the shop about 12 years ago where the front subframe broke in the same spot. And so the design wasn't really foolproof until they really started making it out of higher quality steel, I think, like they did on the 560 SL. But the majority of cars that need these subframe mounting bushings and engine mounts are usually 560. So let's talk about where they're located. First of all, you're going to see the front subframe is a four-cornered sort of inverted table that holds up the engine transmission and front suspension that bolts up to the body of the car. This, um, this subframe mount actually goes between the subframe and the chassis of the car. And you can see it sort of inside the mounting point between the engine um, where if you're looking in the front left and right wheel well you'll see it sort of when you look inboard to where the engine is and you can see the body of the car and the subframe and then this goes in between but it shouldn't be collapsed like this actually it should be significantly taller so what we're looking at is a cheap collapsed old febby mount and if your subframe mount looks like this where the center is lower this is the wear indicator, so this is what I want you guys to focus on. If your center is lower than this indicator, then the subframe mount is junk. So your center should be even with or higher than the wear indicator. And if it's, equal, if it's lower than the wear indicator, which should face outside, you're in trouble. Now, the motor mounts, why do we do motor mounts and subframe mounts at the same time? Well. When you take the subframe down, you can actually get to the motor mounts really easily. Now the procedure for this is a little tricky. It's a good idea to put the car either on four jacks or if you have the opportunity on a lift all the way around. You want the body of the car to be firmly and evenly supported and you want the engine to be centered and supported by a floor jack. Then, very carefully, you jack up the right control arm and undo the two nuts for the shock absorber. And then the left control arm and undo the two nuts for the shock absorber. Now, I have to tell you, the shock absorber has to be disconnected because it's actually holding the control arm up. It's got spring tension behind it. So you need to get a big heavy-duty floor jack, jack up the shock, and undo the two little 13-millimeter nuts because if you don't do that, Guess what happens? Kaboom! It could break your wrist when it releases that one and a half inches of spring tension. You don't want that. That's very dangerous. Now once that's done, and again your engine is firmly supported, then you can undo things like the tie rod and the, um, uh, the, the brake caliper, or brake line, or ABS sensor, or brake wear indicator sensor. And then finally your two subframe mount bolts. Now I loosen, I'll, I'll usually loosen the subframe mount bolts on the left or the right side. And then I'll pick the side I'm going to do the repair on and remove them all the way and gently lower that side of the subframe down uh, enough to where the jack barely supports it. And I can get in there and change the engine mount. You don't want to use a small floor jack for lifting up the engine though. You need a heavy duty floor jack. That engine is very big and very heavy. And if you let it go, guess what happens? The transmission uh, will, I guess the transmission uh, bell housing will snap. 
because of the weight. So you don't want to mess around with that amount of weight. Now once you're in there, you'll notice that there are some other jobs that are pretty easy to do. If you have a 560 SL, the AC compressor can be serviced. Um, if you have uh, a problem with your steering box, it may actually be easier to service your steering box and get to the connections on it. So, um, and on on for some of you that might be planning on doing a tri y conversion or something on a 107, or if you have to change exhaust manifold gaskets, the easiest way to get to it is to drop the subframe. So combining all this stuff is the best, fastest, cheapest, most efficient way to get to things like the exhaust manifolds. Now, a lot of people that I know uh, often do not check these parts, but if you don't know their last replacement date, it's a good idea to check them annually. If you go to Mercedes and you buy just the subframe mounts, they're $57 each. The motor mounts are around $120, $118, something like that for one, and just over $100 for the other. So they're not particularly expensive, then there's some other hardware that goes with it. There's a little rubber pad that goes in the motor mount bolt. There's a little um, rubber guide, clear rubber guide for the motor for the uh, subframe bolt. Um, there's a little rectangular nut for the subframe mounting bolt. All of these items are available from Mercedes, even though they don't come as a kit. You can still get them from Mercedes. Now, some people say to me, "What about the Febby kits?" Well, sometimes Febby makes great kits. Sometimes they don't. In the case of the 107, just get all your stuff from Mercedes. The Febby kits last about 15 years. The Mercedes kits last about 25. That's probably the most honest assessment I can give you. Um, anyway, I hope you felt this video was informative and helpful. We should have some B-roll footage in the video of all the visuals I've talked about so that uh, if you want an idea of what to do you can actually sort of look at the steps in the video and and get through it but um, please like share and subscribe tap the bell for notifications and if you want a classic Mercedes try to teach yourself to do as many jobs as you can and um, also if you're supporting us in patreon we really appreciate you thank you so much we will see you in the next video